So Pro Football Network put out a seven-round mock draft for the Cincinnati Bengals, and we're going to react to it today. So starting off right away, if you guys saw my video a couple days ago, ESPN did the same thing. And in the full seventh-round mock draft, they had us taking Teron Arnold, pick number one. And then they had us taking a wide receiver, pick number two. I believe it was a running back, pick number three. And so on and so on. And to be honest, the pick number three to pick number seven was actually pretty damn good. I didn't really agree with Teron Arnold with the first pick. Um, the wide receiver I was kind of iffy about. There's a couple other receivers I like better. But also, again, like I said, I don't think we're going to take a wide receiver pick number two. It's very possible with the fact that, you know, T might be in his last year with us. We have Yoshi. We have Chuck Sizzle. But they needed to develop a lot better to get to a point that, you know, there would be a replacement for T. Obviously, Yoshi would eventually be the replacement for T. Chuck Sizzle was the replacement for Tyler Boyd. So on and so on, right? So I think we should take a wide receiver in this draft 100%, but maybe not as early as ESPN wanted us to. But nonetheless, let's take a look at what they say today for Pro Football Network's seven-round mock draft. So starting off right away, I have a thing on the screen here because we're going to go by pick by pick here. Um, the first pick, let me see actually real fast. Um, okay, there we go. All right, so the first pick we have here is going to be J.C. Latham from Alabama. Now, that's not surprising at all. Let's be honest. I think that's a very likely pick that, um, you know, we have talked about him over countless months now, over the last couple months since pretty much season ended. So this is a perfect pick, right? You're getting your right tackle franchise, right tackle for the future. And surprisingly enough, out of all, a lot of different mock drafts we have seen, J.C. Latham is not picked usually for the Bengals. He's usually either picked before the Bengals pick or when the Bengals do pick, they have us going somewhat else. So, interestingly enough, J.C. Latham, I'm actually 100% okay with. The second round pick here, they have us going a wide receiver. Now, let's take a look at who this wide receiver actually is and kind of learn more about him to kind of see, you know, whether or not we like him or not. So, he's pick number 59, according to this, according to Pro Football Focus, he is ranked 59th, which is the end of the second round. They have us taking him in the middle of the second round, because obviously that's where we're picking here. Um, he's from Washington, Washington Huskies, 76 uh, receiving grade, okay. Polk is a limited route runner, but he's one of a kind, the go up and get it, uh, contested catch receivers in, his, in this class, and that is really saying something. His knock for making big plays should always get him on the NFL roster in some capacity. Okay, I completely butchered this. I apologize. Let me read that again. Polk is a limited route runner, but he is also one of the best go-up-and-get-it contested catch receivers in this class. And that's really saying something. His knock for making big plays and always get it, uh, should always get him on an NFL roster in some capacity. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like an undrafted guy or a fifth or sixth round pick. Does not sound like a second round pick. What that sounds like is he's, you know, he has a lot of, uh, he's kind of like a project. He has a lot of upside, right? He, ha he has a chance to be good. There's, there's a lot of things that you could go after him with, but he's not developed. He's not polished. He's not ready to go. Which, don't get me wrong, I mean, second round receiver, you're not going to find, you know, the best receiver in the NFL, but you want to find someone who's more kind of in that flow of, okay, you can start him day one and he'll at least be a wide receiver, maybe a low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three, right? Especially if you get him in the first two rounds. Usually a guy like this who has all the intangibles, six foot two, 204, really, you know, great project you want to get him in later rounds you don't want to get him way too early on because again this is a guy you're going to have to develop so his he has reliable hand catcher catches through contact well hands are active to fight off defenders at contests in press or when getting vertical 
willing blocker in one place, does not take plays off, good short area explosion, nice acceleration off the line, and at the breaking point. What? This? Okay, so he's a limited route runner. So what this means is, in college, he probably wasn't asked to do too much. That's really what that means. He wasn't asked to do too much in college. They might have had him like on slant routes, on underneath routes, out routes, kind of like that. He's not running the whole route tree, pretty much. Um, he's a short stride length, doesn't yield a fast top gear of speed for separation, rounds his routes more than a true breaks, narrow base out of his stance, makes it more challenging to generate power and leverage. Again, all this is, listen, at the end of the day, all this is just technique, and he can learn that, right? We could teach him that. I'm not saying we can't. Troy Walters, amazing wide receiver coach, he could teach him how to do all this stuff correctly. I just... If we're going to take wide receiver early, second, first, second round, I don't think we're going first, but second round, I want a more polished product. That's kind of what I feel like at that position. I want someone more polished. And yeah, it's very possible we don't, we're not going to be able to get someone that polished in the second round. Let's see. So, for example, I'm just going to go Newton here, right? Who's available at this round or this pick right here? So, let's go wide receiver. So, Polk is available, obviously. Um, there's another guy we looked at recently who's kind of exactly like this. Oh, this guy. Quez Walker. Who, this guy is not a polished product. He's six foot two, 200 pounds. He has great foot speed. But the problem is, he's a project. And that's kind of what it looks like for Polk is. It looks like he's more of a developed project. He's not like a raw, just out of nowhere project. But I don't think he has the intangibles to be a, you know, just... Go put him in a lineup, and he'll, he's going to work his way up there. And again, like I said, he's a second-round pick, but, you know, that guy, he's the way they make him sound is like he's maybe like a fifth or a sixth-round pick. And again, if we're going to take wide receiver, I wouldn't take one that early if they're more project. Hopefully, I didn't. I, that makes sense. I didn't just run around in circles there. Third round, um, Braden Frisky. Fisky, this is the guy who had an outstanding combine. This is the guy who was, like, breaking all the records. Well, I don't say breaking all the records. He had one of the top scorers of the combine at his position. So, that's actually not surprising at all. Cade Stover. Love this pick. No problem at all with that. Mason McCormick. We talked about him many, many times. I'm absolutely okay with going guard here. Another wide receiver. See, this is where I'm okay with taking... If you're going to take someone like this... I don't know who this guy is. He has my name. Shout out to him. But... If you're gonna take a wide receiver who's more of a project, take him in the fifth round. You know, I don't, I don't care. Take him fifth, sixth. You know, we took Yoshi in the fifth, um, in the sixth last year, and we took Charlie in the fourth round, right? So take him in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. I, I'm okay with that. So where is this guy that they're showing us right here? Let me see if he's actually even on here. So his name is what Ryan. It's he is not on Pro Football Focus's board. All right, so he's not on Pro Football Focus's board, but okay. We have Isaac here running back from Illinois. Did I just completely butcher that? Um, that's Louisiana. That's not Illinois. Okay. Well, that's what uh <laughs> is definitely not the correct uh name. All right, so what's the guy's name again? Isaac. Okay, so Isaac right here. I think I have, I actually mocked, uh, drafted him in a mock before. 6 for 1, 225 pounds. Not much analysis, of, uh, analysis about him, but that's why he's going to be a six round pick. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm fine with going running back in the draft, by the way. I'm fine with going run, a third running back position, get someone who maybe has a chance to be good. Another offensive lineman, a linebacker, a D tackle, and another linebacker. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't mind. I don't mind these picks at all. The only, honestly, this whole mock draft, I am absolutely okay with, except for potentially that pick. But again, like I said, it really comes down to I need to do more research on Polk and learn more about him. The other guy we talked about before was very much a project. This guy seems like he seems like if you put him in the correct position and he learns, he can be really good. I just don't know how I feel about him. I would want a more developed... If we're going to go that early, second round pick there, I would want more of a, you know, 
develop a developed project if you're going to go project. But if not, I want someone who's more polished. But tell me down below your thoughts, opinions, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.